I want to read the first page out of my Attack and Fear book to you because it kind of goes along what I'm going to be talking on tonight. Mm -hmm. And this will make you, it's Attack and Fear, and I want to read the first page to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I do have copies of this. If you want one, let me know, or, you know, some more copies. If you need some copies, need an Attack and Fear book. First thing is called uncertainty. We are living in a world of confusion and uncertainty. There are natural calamities such as earthquakes and tornadoes, prediction of the world's natural resources being depleted. People are telling us the world is going to be destroyed in a few short years, not only to mention pestilence and diseases, a fatal epidemic causing doom to the whole world's population. Lying politicians not knowing who to believe, thus not knowing who to trust. Propaganda in the media not allowing the truth to be told. Mm. Tensions between brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, and race against race. Mm. Detractions in relationship, families, churches, and governments causing division and confusion. <coughs> the, sanctified, the sanctity of life not valuing the unborn or the elderly. People are not being accountable and being critical of others, thus not taking responsibility for their own actions. Also not building proper relationships. Well, the reason for this, all this uncertainty in the world and all the things that I've described what's going on in the world from my book on attacking fear that we see that it's a battle line. We're in a battle line against the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And there is a battle line being drawn right now. Wow. And one of the things that he is actually saying is that we read these things that get into our minds and just cause confusion. And what we're doing, what I'm looking at today is faith from God versus fear from Satan. My, my. Now, Satan uses fear. That is probably the one of his biggest weapons yes. is to use fear. But God uses faith. Yes. Now, we know the definition of faith comes in Hebrews 11.1. 1. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence not seen. So we see that with our faith is what we hope for, what we, that our expectations. Mm -hmm. But we also understand, mm -mm -mm, that that when you have fear in your life, that's the absence of your faith. Mm. I want you to catch, catch it. Yes. Fear is having the absence of faith. Yes. Or we can say it's the absence of our hope. And we know Jesus Christ <laughs> is our hope of glory. Christ, so First mm. John 4:18. 1 John 4.18 says, There's no fear in love, mm. but perfect love casts out fear mm -hmm. because fear has torment. Wow. Mm. He that fears not, he that fear is not perfect in love. Mm. So when we're seeing here, it is actually a spirit. Fear is a spirit that is trying to attach to every one of our emotions. Fear wants to cause torment in our life. And when we see that it says it, fear causes torment. Mm -hmm. And so we see, what is torment? Well, it can be severe mental or physical suffering. You know, we understand that fear is, fear is, False evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of truth. Yes. It's the opposite of faith. So when we get into fear, it happens that we get in torment. 
and we go into, we get distressed, and it's fear is very painful. It can be painful in our minds. Our minds is going this way and that way. There's confusion in our minds because of fear. Now, we have to understand that fear is a distressing emotion, that you feel totally distressed out because you, you don't know where there's any hope or anything. You get to hopelessness. But we see it's a distressing emotion. It gets you confusion in your mind. Uh, now, a lot of men, they, they have a fear, and they have fear of poverty or fear of lack. They have fear of losses, you know, they, not, not only loss of a human or a relative, but loss of their identity. Wow. That sometimes that's fear, that they wow. get us into the loss of our identity of who we are in Christ as believers. And so if he can put fear in our mind that we tend to lose our faith and trust in the one that can deliver us in all things. Wow. Then we see that uh, fear comes over bereavement, you know, that you that, you know, you might lose somebody, somebody dies or or something like this. And we get this fear going into <clears throat> us. And this is all types of fear that wants to torment our soul. It wants to affect our mind, our will and emotions. That fear wants us to be so immobilized that we cannot operate in the normal faith that makes us be able to step out and, and follow the steps that God has ordered for us. So we see his torment. Fear, a lot of times there are people that have fear of sickness. And because they have this, such a fear of sickness, this actually fear is a spirit. Because we know that in 2 Timothy 1, 7, which we can quote all the time, it says... For God has not given us the spirit of fear. And we have to realize this is an ungodly spirit that tries to attach itself to us. Now, he cannot possess us as Christians because we are God's possessions. We've been bought and paid for through the blood of Jesus. But that fear can attach itself to mm. us mm. in our physical realm and in our mental realm mm. and it makes us actually have doubt yeah. and we ha we have to some people and you see some people they fear death mm. and what they do they might not die but they have so much fear that they short change their life and infirmity comes into their life because they fear death so much mm. now I've met so many people because of fear and they would speak things out like they say, well, I'm fearful that I'll get Alzheimer's or dementia and, uh, and everything. And they would talk this. And so what happened? That spirit of fear hit them. Mm -hmm. And it is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand it is a spirit. And so we have to understand that people, you know, we, they get to the point. And another thing about fear is our future. Mm, my. Oh, how many times have you worried about something so much and fear came over? What, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? You know, are they going to come and take my car away, or they're going to do this, or is my house going to burn down, or anything. And people get these things in their mind mm. because they hear these things, and they get this fear built into them. Mm. And so that's where Satan, when you start voicing your fear, you know, like my mom used to say, I hope they'd never put me in a nursing home. Well, what did she end up in a nursing home? Because of dementia. And so we ended up, because she would she'd leave the house crawl out the window in the middle of the light and go out in the woods looking for her mama. But she spoke that at an early age, that I do not want to lose my mind and I don't want to go in a nursing home. Well, it got to the point with her just wandering off in the woods like this, they had to have somebody there with her. So what you fear is what you become. Mm. 
-hmm. You know, that's what Job talked about that. That, you know, that what you fear is what will happen to you. And so we have to understand that sometimes we get so fearful of what the future is. Now, we see in today's realm, in politics and everything else, everybody is operating in the fear motive. We're going to run out of resources. We're going to do this. We cannot use fossil fear because we'll run out of it. Uh, the United States has enough right now to last 300 years. And if God's not, is still not come back, I feel like they'll come up with something new time it ran out. You know, these are type of things that we have to understand. But, you know, uh, and this is not part of my sermon, but it just came over my mind. And it talks in the scripture is that man will worship the creation more than the creator. And so this is what we're going through with all these things about fear, about running out of resources, this and this and this. And so we see that that spirit of fear is trying to attach to each person that we become totally immobilized and then they can control us. So we have to get out of that fear. Now we see rest of that second Timothy one seven says, for God have not given us a spirit of fear. Again, I say it, we have to understand it's a spirit that we can call down and it's spirit that comes from the kingdom of Satan. But faith comes from the kingdom of God. So we said fear is the absence of faith. So we see that it gives us power, love, and a sound mind. Well, I want to look at 1 Peter 1, 7 and 8 and 9. 1 Peter 7, 8, 9, but I went through a couple of scriptures in between there. That it says, in 1 Peter 1, 7 says this, that the trial of your faith what is that saying? We are going to go through trials because of our faith. Mm. There are going to be things that's going to make us get to the place of doubt and get into fear. But it says that, that the trial of your faith being more precious than gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. Did you catch that? Mm. This is not saying that you're not going to go through trials. You will go through trials. And your faith is going to be shaken. Mm. And because of the fear. Because the fear that comes upon us. So, but it also, that fear keeps us to be so immobilized that we not, not only not think it straight, but we do not move forward and what God has called us to do. So we see that in about the trial, James 1 3 says, James 1 3 says, knowing this, that trying of your faith worketh patience. Otherwise, fear is going to try our faith in its its own trial. And when we overcome in our faith and where we stick with our faith, we learn to have patience. Mm. That you understand that your patience says, well, this might be for a while, but with God, I know I'll get through it. This is what, when you go through trials, you have to say, do I trust God enough that he'll get me through it? Yes. It's like I mentioned a lot of times, the scripture says that you have light momentary afflictions. Well, what I look at it, and I'm, you know, in the scripture it says Selah, which means pause and think about it. When I have things or trials I go through, I stop and think about it as a pause of life to see if I'm going to trust God or not, or I'm going to give in to that fear or give in to that infirmity or anything like this. Mm -hmm. There is a spirit of infirmity that we need to pray off mm -hmm. and it wants to attach to people. So we see that we know the trial is, we're going through a trial of our faith. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we see in James 1.12, James 1.12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised him to them that love him. Wow. When we see that we do not give in to fear, and there's all types of fears that out there, and that spirit of fear wants to attach even to Christians that believe. It wants to make our faith very small. We have all been given a measure of faith, and we need to exercise. And when fear tries to come, you say, no, Lord, I am able to get through this. With I trust you, no matter what calamity, no matter what pestilence, no matter what anybody says, I'm not going to give in to fear. And that's what we have. And right now, we look at the world, there's fear just on the rampage. Uh, I saw a thing uh, is in, what was it, Holland? Uh, that they, was it Holland? Anyway, it was one of the foreign countries that they were, no, it was the Welsh. Uh, that they're oranges mm -hmm. because of the weather they become kind of bumpy and, and maybe a little bit of scar on the oranges and the people are not buying oranges and people are, the farmers are just taking truckloads and just dumping them out in the field to rot and when you open it up those oranges they're just good inside but because of the outside appearance People are not buying them at the store. So all these fields of oranges are just, and the prices of oranges have gone up because people wanted that perfect outside. But man looks at outward appearance, but God looks at, at the heart. So if people would look at the inside of the orange, which was just normal, that, you know, it's, it, it kind of looks like what we see nowadays. People are looking at the outside mm. and they're looking through eyes that have fear mm. instead of having faith that we can yeah. do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Yes, I mean. And we do not need to get into that fear. And when we go and get it, we're all going to be tempted. Because these spirits are going around to see who he can attach to. That's right. And the spirit of fear wants to attach to many people as that, and to the point that you can't even move forward. <laughs> so we see this, that it is, but if you get, don't give into the temptation <coughs> and you stay focused, oh. that you get a crown of life. You receive that crowd you get a reward to keep in the faith instead of operating in fear well going back to first peter 1 8 first peter 1 8 says whom whom have not seen you love and whom though you now yet see him not yet believing we rejoice with unspeakable and full of glory what is that saying? Faith. What is the first verse we said? You might as well say, faith, because of faith, we will give us joy. No matter what fear is trying to attach to us, not what anybody is trying to say, because of our faith, we also get that hope, which is joy with confident expectations. Yeah. Our expectations change. And we have to get rid of that fear in our life and call it like it is. Mm. It is a spirit. Mm. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers of darkness and principalities and so forth. So we have to call it like it is. Yes. That we call down that spirit and we need to pray for discernment oh, yes. of this fear that we can call it down and we go on and take authority over it. 
Now we see in 1 Peter 1.9, 1 Peter 1.9 says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Praise God. So, fear is what? Is torment. Fear wants to get you out of <coughs> trusting God. Fear is trying to take away your hope. Fear just wants to so much grip you that you'll be so totally immobilized and put that doubt and not trust in God that he says that I will be with you and I'll never forsake you. Fear wants to take God out of your life. So when we look at this, we understand it is a spirit. But we go back. It says God did not give us a spirit of fear. That tells you right now it's not from God. It's not from God. Fear is not from God. And the people that speak fear, they're not, they are using and they're being instrument of Satan. That sounds kind of rough, but that's exactly what it is. When people use fear, they're not using the love of God. That it says you back in the verse seven and second Timothy one seven, it just says he's not giving us spirit of fear, but power and sound mind. But it says in first John four eighteen that that perfect love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. And when we learn to love, yes. we learn to love in a God kind of love unconditionally. <clears throat> That will cast out fear. Yes. And I'm not saying that momentary or sometimes that we don't operate in fear. But if we know what we're fighting, that it is actually a spirit that we can call down. Yes. And we can rebuke that spirit. That's the reason why we need to have a discernment of spirit. We need to pray for discernment when fear comes and says, Lord... Give me discernment to how I can overcome this trial or this temptation. Yes. That fear is trying to put in my life. So we see that we're still in this battle. The kingdom of Satan versus the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And it is something that fear is trying to make our faith low. But when we have faith, we get rid of the fear. Lord. We, we can take authority over that fear. God. A lot of us, we operate in everyday things that we're fearful of doing stuff. But like Joyce Meyer says, do it afraid. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we have to do things. You know, a lot of times, I'll tell you one fear I have, and I might as well say it. I've always had fear of heights. And, and going over bridges. Mm -hmm. I've always had those fears. Well, the first time I was at Freeport, Texas, and it went over the canal, and it, and I saw, I saw the bridge that went over the canal, and it was so high I saw it off a dense distance, and I wanted to stop and not go over it, but I overcame my fear. I went over it. When I crossed the Mississippi River, I mean, I mean, this was down by New Orleans and everything, and it's long. And I, and I saw that bridge of cars going every which way. But I got behind a slow truck. And so I was able to overcome. The Lord provided a slow truck in front of me so I could concentrate on that truck and don't look side by side. I overcame that fear. Thank God, God he put a truck that I could do so I wouldn't be so fearful. But we have to understand that's a little bit about me. That we all will fight fear, but we have to understand it's a spirit. And it's the thing. Why did I have that fear of the bridges or the heights? Well, I might fall off the bridge or I might, it's too high and I might drown or whatever. That's all the things, thoughts that Satan's going to try to put in your mind to make you fearful so you won't do what God wants you to do. So that's the thing we have to understand. We're fighting a battle and it's in the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. 
fear versus our faith. Faith comes from God. Fear comes from Satan. And we have to understand, do we live by the spirit of the living God or do we live by the spirit of Satan and his imps through fear? Let us pray. Father God, I bind the spirit of fear off of my life. I bind that spirit that just wants to rob us and steal from us that peace that God gives us. Father, I just pray right now we rebuke that spirit of fear that you give us love, power, and a sound mind. And fear cannot have our mind. Amen. Fear cannot have our ministry. Amen. Fear cannot have our testimony. Amen. Father, we speak right now. We bind the spirit of fear and when it tries to attack us, bring us back to the word. Yes. To that we realize it does not come from you. And we are able to rebuke fear in our lives. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.